Deputy Adams has the floor. Kishak, this morning I went back to the speech that you made on the 9th of March 2011 on the nomination of your government. And three years is indeed a long time in politics. In that time, all your fine words have faded. Marajar and Seanachal, Asmoy and Scaly and Amshur. Then you told us, you may remember this, we are on the threshold of a new era of achievement, prosperity and potential. You talked about how our republic was betrayed. You spoke about how people are frightened of losing their homes, of parents rendered speechless at the sight of their children boarding planes to countries. And here, Tishak, you waxed lyrically. Where spring is autumn, and our, tomorrow, our today is their tomorrow. You went on about workers praying for invisibility as they could for the dole, and the worry that the neighbours might see the St Vincent de Paul calling at the door. You promised that what was done will most certainly not be done again. You committed to create a new Ireland that works, that's fair, that is honest. You spoke of a covenant with the Irish people. You promised to close the gap between the politics and the people, between the government and the government. Taoiseach, you've done none of these things. In truth, you did the opposite. And the people aren't stupid. That's why the government party did so badly in the recent elections. Citizens kept a report card on your government and they marked it clearly. They marked it failure. Taoiseach, your speech of March 2011 didn't mention the North. On your watch, the peace process is facing fresh challenges and the anti-agreement elements are renewing efforts to undermine and destroy the power sharing and all Ireland political institutions. And while I welcome the Tannister's remarks on the peace process, your speech today, as in 2011, didn't mention the North either. Your government needs to be seized by the urgency of the current situation. There is an onus on the government here to take a lead in defending the process and ensuring that the necessary momentum of change is reinvigorated. In time, in your time, in your term, the North has generally been mentioned by Fine Gael, by Labour, by Fianna Fáil, in a futile attempt to attack Sinn Féin. And that's no way to deal with the partition of this island and its consequences and the necessary job of building good relations with our unionist neighbours. Nor is it a way to keep the British government to its obligations under the Good Friday Agreement. This forms no part of the priorities you set out today. And Taoiseach, that's not good enough. You're a co-equal guarantor of the Good Friday Agreement. It's time this government lived up to that responsibility and not just on the day before the 12th, but every day. You also had the opportunity to change political direction in your announcements, to be socially conscious, to be fair, to set a new direction, to make the rhetoric of your March 2011 speech even belatedly, but to make it a reality. Hapard a Shaw a Yanu, Martadini Fos a Folunch. And for struggling families, a cabinet reshuffle, let's be clear about this, is of no consequence whatsoever unless it can bring positive change to their daily lives. And the new cabinet you have announced, look, look, the new cabinet you have announced is no different in political outlook or approach from the outgoing cabinet. And it, in turn, is no different from your Fianna Fáil predecessors. And that has been the tragic record of politics in this state for decades. Three years ago, your rhetoric was all about a democratic revolution, but it hasn't turned out like that. This government has broken one election promise after another. When the Troika was here, even though you embraced and continued to embrace austerity with a passion, you dishonestly blamed the Troika for your decisions. Your government has been the European Union's good little boys and good little girls doing it Frankfurt's way by giving the people's money to the banks and heaping private banking debt on long-suffering families. But since the Troika left, 
Even though its mentality is alive and well in the cabinet room, you've steadily lost control of political events as your government stumbles from one embarrassing debacle to another. And that's where I timed this stumble, was when the big boys left you to your own devices. And that's probably best represented by your handling of the crisis in the justice system and the Gardaí. You spent, Taoiseach, months defending a dysfunctional system and attacked the opposition for asking entirely legitimate questions. You strongly rejected suggestions that the Justice Minister should resign in the face of mounting scandals. You adopted the same attitude in relation to the Garda Commissioner, for he too had to go. You ignored, you dismissed, you ridiculed warnings from Sinn Féin and others about the way your government was reacting to these serious issues. Arrogance has crept in to the way this government does its business. That arrogance is evident in the appointment of political cronies to state boards in the run-up to today's cabinet reshuffle. In the dying days of the last government, Fianna Fáil packed state boards with their cronies. They were rightly and loudly criticised at that time by you. Yet here are you doing exactly the very same thing. You also sought to retain control over the banking inquiry by stacking it with government TDs and senators. Your ministers have favoured their own constituencies in funding. You also said you would not cut child benefit or support for citizens with disabilities. You've done both. You said you would get a deal on the banking debt. You failed to get such a deal. But what have you delivered? Cuts to living standards and vital public services, an unsustainable banking debt for decades to come, 10 people, mostly young people, emigrating every hour, hundreds of thousands of families in mortgage distress, a homeless crisis, a health service that is crumbling, a family home tax, water charges. Willa and ye Willa, Tupish Jack Ella, Duraha, or Gra Dini and Stoich Shaw. Hogshiv, Cousin, and Shin and Aranya, or Shin and five more, less in real to Shaw, Tashivsha, a Cousin, and Karkal Orga. Lots of money for consultants, big bankers, investors, and politicians, but little for children with disabilities. Special needs assistance cut back. Senior citizens hit by the government again and again and again. Now, most citizens out there understand that people would have to shoulder our share, their share of the burden of recovery, given the way Fianna Fáil left things. People know that. But what they resent is the unfair way this has been done by a government which is clearly ruling in the interests of the elites. For some parents, and I've met them, I'm sure you have met them, all their children have left. All of them. They're the escape generation, the scattering. These people and their families know exactly who is responsible for their forced emigration. Taoiseach, the cabinet reshuffle today changes none of this. Being in government is about making choices. This government could have made different choices. To bollock needs far on. Last October, Sinn Féin put forward budgetary proposals based on fairness. These would have reduced the deficit, reduced tax on families, protected public services, and invested in jobs. The government chose a different route, which has led to widespread hardship for ordinary citizens. It's time now, rather than the rhetoric, that this government give ordinary families a break. October's budget must give something back. It must ease the tax burden on working people. It must distribute the burden of recovery more fairly. But people have lost hope that you will do any of this. Since the elections, Fine Gael and Labour say they will subject Sinn Féin's economic policies to greater scrutiny. I welcome that. There is a need for an honest, forthright, genuine discussion about a different economic approach. But of course, your view of the economy is based on your core political values. If you're for privatisation, if you don't believe in the right to public services, you have a particular view. And that view is best represented by this government's austerity policies. However, if you believe in a real republic, if you believe in a citizen-centred, rights-based society, if you believe in the right to a home, to universal health services, to access to education, to freedom, to equality, if you believe, most importantly, in solidarity, that will shape your economic policy. 
and that is the ground that Sinn Féin stands on. During the period of the Celtic Tiger, Sinn Féin pointed out the dangers of the developing property bubble and the potential for an economic crash. We warned of the over-reliance on taxes from the property sector, of over-dependency on construction, of the danger of auction politics. We argued for the wealth of the Catholic Tiger to be invested in real sustainable jobs and public services and in infrastructure. We were ridiculed by the very same people whose flawed, greedy, self-serving policies collapsed the economy, forcing hundreds of thousands out of work and almost a half a million of our young people overseas. Taoiseach Sinn Féin was right then and Sinn Féin is right now. We believe it is possible to make the necessary deficit adjustments without harming families or frontline adjustments. Your cabinet made these decisions, not individual ministers who time and time and time again in here told us this was a cabinet decision. It's possible to create real jobs. It is possible, you might think this is a strange thing for to listen to, to ask the wealthiest to pay more. What's wrong with that? It is possible to cut spending in our waste and public spending. The property tax, you must, you must live in the real world. The property tax, water tax, removal of medical cards, mortgage distress, a lack of social housing have pushed people to the limit. You're bound to know that. You don't need me to come in here. You all represent constituencies. You all represent real people. You're bound to know that. So let's see some scrutiny of the policies of Sinn Féin, but also of the policies of Fine Gael, of Labour, of Fianna Fáil, which says for decades to come that our children and our grandchildren should be forced to pay for the greed of the bankers, the developers and corrupt politicians. That's not right. That's not fair. You should have put a stop to that T-shirt. And the reality is there's no real difference between the leadership of Fine Gael and the leadership of Fianna Fáil on economic matters. I can hear Kirog, Kirog, Ella, Marajarpa. Your two sides of the one economic coin. But Labour, Labour should be different, and Labour could be different. When will the Labour Party wake up to the unmistakable message delivered by the voters in May? When will the Labour Party end its fatal embrace of Fine Gael? You need to decide you've still time on a radical, a real radical change of strategy. And that means more than changing your party leader who in fairness sacrificed himself, fell on a sword rather than involve the party in a, an internal feud, which he probably would have defeated. So you've time to get it right. This reshuffle is a mediocre piece of political drama that will have no positive outcome for the people of Laos, although Laos, interestingly enough, now has two junior ministers. So there you go, a super junior. Fair play, go guard your house. Uh, uh, is, is, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a super minister. But the working people of Laos, or of Dublin, or of Mayo, or of Derry, or Antrim, dare I say, or Armagh, will not see any difference at all. Different folks, same strokes. So in keeping, in, keeping, in keeping with your government's record, there is little of substance in today's manoeuvre. Although I have to say I welcome the appointment of a junior minister for the diaspora, which is a Sinn Féin proposal. What citizens want, what citizens want, and more importantly, more importantly, because we are the servants of the people. We are sent here by the people. What citizens need, which is more important, and what they clearly voted for in May, as they did in the general election in 2011, was political change. Your government hasn't delivered this. Your government has let the people down. And you have no mandate whatsoever for doing what you are doing. So instead of reshuffling the jokers in the pack, instead of reshuffling your cabinet, you should let Paddy and Patricia have their say. You should call a general election. Go to the people, let the people decide. Go to Mila Margot.